let's take it back a little bit. What type of student were you in school? Um, I was a hustler in school. I was doing things that I wasn't really supposed to be doing. So I wasn't really the scholar, like the top of the list. But um, I was very funny and the teachers liked me. But I was always interested in what I was learning. But I was just, you know, I paid people to do my essays and stuff. But I did go to college, passed it. So you graduated college? Yep. Okay, you want to say which college? Well, it's in Canada, so. And let me ask you this, when it comes to college, everybody has different feelings when it comes to that. Uh, some people say, go to college, you need your education. Some people say, you don't need college. What's your take on, you know, somebody watching this, what's some general advice regarding All right, that's college? A very, that's a good question. I was just actually talking about this the other day. Um, I don't regret going to college. I love the fact that I went to college. I went to college for law, so it's something that I can use, you know, in everyday life. But I, I truly believe that you don't really need college unless you, you know, a doctor, I want to go back to school for psychiatry, I want to be a psychiatrist. So, you know, unless it's like at a higher level, but to be honest, in America, I feel that like entrepreneurship is like the way to go, like inventing stuff and like just, you know, having your own business. I feel like that's like honestly the best thing. Cause sometimes you go to college, you pay all this money and you don't even use it anywhere. So let me ask you this. Obviously, you're doing a lot of stuff. I mean, we've, you've been in music videos and been on covers and uh, obviously now acting. When do you see yourself going back to do the psychology thing if you choose to do that? Um, or is that like a fallback plan? No, it's absolutely not a fallback plan because, you know, I, I read about it every day. So if I don't go to school for it, I'm going to teach myself about it. I, in a few months, I want to start going to schools and like community, like community resources and like shelter homes to talk about, you know, I want to do family psychiatry and kind of get like unite their families back together and help these young girls because I was in foster care myself. So I want to relate to these young women and show that there's more, you know, than the streets or whatever they're into. You know, there's hope. Now, let me ask you this. I mean, it's, it's almost like two personalities really because I have 10 personalities <laughs> because that sounds like a very studious uh nine to five like a corporate gig I don't know if you'd call it a corporate gig but kind of like that type of element you know what I mean um versus you know like I'll see you on baller alert the other day you know what I mean so like yeah. it's like it's like I believe that um like I live two different lives so I try to like collide them both so they kind of live in one life like you know so I would do psychology with my friends like I wouldn't do it initially for the bread but like I just think that everyone needs a therapist and I'm very good at that like so you know I eventually just want to just help I, I help people out every day you know with their problems and I love it so I think that um I just want to get more into that. I want to learn about it. I want to take courses about it, and I want to do one-on-ones with people. Now, let me ask you this. Is this because you have a personal passion for it, or is the lifestyle that you have right now with the acting and stuff in the urban industry and, um, you know, like when we see you on, like, Baller Alert and stuff like that, is that not making the type of money you want it to make? Or, so what I'm asking is, it's is it very, a money issue my, or no, is it a passion it's issue? A, it's a passion. It's a passion of mine. I'm an Aquarius, so I'm a human, humanitarian, and I'm very personable. And, you know, so people open up to me. Everybody open. It's very easy to open up to me. So um, it's a passion of mine to help people. And I was didn't really know that I needed one until I got to New York, and then I realized everybody needs one. So why not? At what point do you feel the like... The youth, mostly. I want to help the youth. The youth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, obviously, there's mixed emotions when it comes to when people need a therapist or a psych psychologist. Is that what you would call it? Or what a would therapist. You call therapist. Okay. Mm -hmm. At what point... But you take psychology. Okay. Yeah. So at what point do you 
do you tell a youngster or do you advise a youngster to go see a therapist? At what is the breaking point or the breaking level that you say, okay, this type of stuff, you need some real guidance, maybe some medical guidance, you know, at um, what point? Okay, honestly. It's different for everybody. I w yeah, but I really truly believe that kids should be taking it at a very young age because I don't know why the fuck nobody told me to go in psycho ther therapy when I was young or counseling or any of that, but I needed it. And I believe that I would be here, you know, if I would have taken those necessary steps to deal with my anxiety and all the things that I went through as a child in your childhood and stuff. So I believe if I've dealt with those issues at a time, you know, better, Time. What am I saying? Trying to say? Yeah. If you dealt it, with, yeah. If you dealt it with, with it earlier younger, on in life, yeah, it might not be an issue for you now. Yeah, I would. I definitely would be a totally different person. Like I wouldn't be fucking crazy. So let me ask you this: it, 2020 hindsight, looking back at your life, at what point, what age would you have needed that guidance? Mm, probably. Probably before grade one. Like, probably in grade one or two. Because I was, when I was younger, I was very smart. I knew what was going on. So, you know, I I already, I always knew. So I, I believe that if I had someone there, like, talking me through all the shit that I was dealing with, I wouldn't be constantly thinking about it and, like, going over these, and you know. And I still find myself doing that today. Now, you did mention that you were in foster care before. Mm-hmm. Now... When you say that you personally might have needed a therapist or some type of guidance, is that because p parents or a parental guidance wasn't in your life particularly Absolutely. at that point? Absolutely. And, you know, when we're, before we're six, up to six, a child, that's the most, you know, time of their life that's the most relevant, like the most relevant, it kind of guides who you're going to be. Um, so a lot of things that happen to you as a child before the age of six carries on throughout your entire life. And a lot of people don't know that. So if you deal with it at a younger age, you'll be able to deal with it as you get older and it won't be such a fucking nuisance. Now, taking yourself out of the element, personally, kids with parents or a parent, when do you find that they may, may need therapy or well, therapist? I believe that, like, a lot of people <sighs> um, that are blessed to have, like, a two-parent home, like a white picket, you know, the American dream type perfect life, I believe that they still have their issues, and I believe that, you know, they they still have anxieties. They still, you know, whether their anxiety may be getting an A on that test or, you know, I got to win this hockey game or whatever – to make my dad proud like that still messes you up because you're not really you know there's a lot of things in a lot of different house types of, you know there's levels so I think that everybody doesn't matter if you come from the hood doesn't matter if you come from the suburbs everybody needs that one person to let it out and help you manage your thoughts so even if you come from a two-parent household yes you still need some sort of higher guidance I believe I believe a lot a lot of people do, yeah. A lot of people don't, but I believe my personal opinion is that a lot of people do because a lot of people are fucked up and they don't know why. All right. Your foster care experience. What can you say about it? Um It was honestly the best thing that ever happened to me. How did someone like you get into foster care in the first place? Um, well, my dad was in jail. A lot of people don't know this, so it's a little hard to talk about it. But my dad was my life. He was back and forth in jail. And then my mom was messed up on drugs. So, you know, after a couple of visits and investigations and all that, I got taken out of my home. But even before foster care, though, like as a younger child, because I went there in high school, um, I was always back and forth between like, you know, my mom was gone out of town and my dad was in jail. So I was like always being pinballed around to these different houses. I see. Mm -hmm. So 
You get into foster care at, at what age, would you say? Um, I think I was in grade nine. Grade nine? Or grade eight. Grade eight or nine, so like- Or maybe, yeah, grade eight. So like in America, that would be considered middle school, middle almost school, high school. Yeah. yeah. I, how does it work in Canada? Do they yes, have middle school, high school? They just of? started that. Yeah, but what, um, what did it used to be? It's SK to grade eight is one school, and then um, nine to twelve is high school. Okay, so about middle school, high school, you were forcibly taken into foster care. Yeah. Now explain the foster and uh, obviously foster care experience in Canada is totally different. Is probably different than in America. But I like I I don't I can't speak on the American system because I only know some of it. Right. But in for the Canadian system, um, they paid like when I moved out of foster care, they paid my rent, they paid my schooling. Like if it wasn't for them, I don't know where I would be. Like to like they saved my life. And so okay, so about eighth or ninth grade, you go into foster care. Now, how long were you in foster care for in that system? Um, from grade eight till I was seventeen. That's when you're basically allowed to move out. And then that's when they pay. Like, so two, three years? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, longer. Like five. Five years. Mm -hmm. And when it came to Four. when it came to your foster care experience, you lived with other kids? Um, she she had like some that she uh, always had. Um, so I did, but not very many. Maybe there was like three. Mm -hmm. Like she was had ones that she's had and then she wasn't always it wasn't in and out which is good because i probably would have killed somebody <laughs> <laughs> so so your foster your foster care guardian was a good experience she yeah, was top notch she, you know, yeah like they went to um a church which i enjoyed i i don't i personally like i don't like to go to church <laughs> but um her the church was amazing so that kind of brought me some spiritual you know, energy, and then um, it was her, her and her husband, and they were they were amazing. They were amazing. So a couple questions come to my mind. One, do you still keep in contact with them? Um, my foster father passed away, and then my foster mother lost it after that happened. So I don't know what. No. Lost it. Yeah, like she went crazy. Hmm. I stayed with her like a year after that, and she just went. I guess because like I left, my foster sister left, and then he died. So I'm sad. So, what about your real parents? Are you in contact with them? Um, my dad passed away two years ago, and then my mother. Um, I am okay with her now. I forgive her. <laughs> so let me ask you this: When it comes to the foster care world, what advice would you have for a, a child that? So I want I want to get two opinions on this. What do you have for advice for a child that's about to be in foster care? It's it's time for them to um, forcibly go into a foster care situation. I don't know what to say to answer that question because I don't know what it's like here. So I don't know. I don't want to say what I would say if I knew what I was supposed to know about the foster care system here. I you see, know what I, I mean? You. Like I don't know if it's a horrible experience. You know, can it, Canada is a lot harder to be a foster parent, so you know that you're potentially probably more than likely going to a good home, but here I can't, I don't know. All right, well, let's talk to a, a foster care person in Canada that's about to go into foster care. I guess, what's some words of advice on to ease in into a foster care system as, as speedy and easy as possible. I know, like, okay, what so. Are some, what are some advice or some tips that you would have that you would advise to a youngster? Some advice that I would give to the youth that's potentially going to foster care um, would be to just open up your mind, let, you know, it is what it is, and you can't do nothing about it. Um, so just give them a chance, give the system a chance because it will help you. Like if I did not go into foster care, I would probably be selling drugs somewhere and doing things that <laughs> I'm not really supposed to be doing. Um, they're very helpful, they wanna help you. So just listen to them, just, you know, do what you gotta do And then for you. And then what's some advice to a child getting out of the foster care system? Okay, they've outgrown the situation, now they're about to go into 
an independent or real world situation. What advice do you have for that? Like, you mean a, a child that's in it and then they're moving out on their own? Exactly. Um, well, I would say go to school because they give you the option. You don't have to go to school. They, they will pay for your school if you choose to go to college. So take advantage of that. That's what I did. I went, they paid for two of programs that I took. Like I got a diploma and then they paid for another whole entire different course. Like they w like take advantage of the system. Like if you don't like them and you hate them and you hate the system, you hate foster care, all that, just take advantage of it. Make yourself better from what they'll have to offer you. Now, still speaking about your youth, what jobs did you have growing up, if any? If any. Um, well, my first job was Paper Girl. And then when I was in like grade four. And then um, I worked at McDonald's. <laughs> uh, I got fired from there for giving free managed packages away. And then um, I worked at Champs. And then I worked little jobs here and there. And then I worked security. And are these all jobs in Canada or? Mm -hmm. Okay, got you. Now, any crazy customer stories dealing with any of those jobs you just mentioned? Um, well, at Champs, we would get famous people all the time. <laughs> so, you know, it was cool. Like, famous people would come in and, like, sign our boxes and stuff. But um, at McDonald's, I got, like, a fry thrown at me, and that was, like, the worst. <laughs> and why did you have a fry thrown at you? the whole entire soup large fry because I don't remember but it was so embarrassing he was an asshole I remember what, what he looked like I was 15 the fuck don't fry at me for now let me ask you this um, what's your message to the youth just in general speaking my message to the youth is take it seriously don't let it pass you by like if I could rewind rewind time I would I would have done so much differently um, yeah take advantage of whatever someone has to offer you and just stay I believe you should stay in school you know do something productive with your life don't just let it waste away